Hey everyone, 8Bishop here. Today we're taking a look at our uh, Jubilee combo deck. Um, so if you don't know what Jubilee does, on reveal, you play the top card of your deck at this location. And so the idea of the deck is just to try to abuse getting expensive cards that are overstatted. Um, won't always hit, but we're playing a couple cards that kind of kind of give you extra attempts to. So Odin's a decent hit um, and will give you another Jubilee effect if it's in an empty space. Uh, Armin Zola is a little strange to hit, but it does put Jubilees in your other locations, so as long as your board isn't flooded, which normally it won't be at this deck. Um, if you hit a Giganto, you're just getting an overstated unit. Uh, if you hit a Typhoid Mary, you're getting a pretty strong unit. Um, Enchantress is in here, both to counter Dynas, which are popular, and because it can turn off our Typhoid Mary, which is, um, the only ongoing effect we have besides our, uh, armor, which is just here for counterplay. Uh, we're running Quicksilver and Domino just to guarantee that we can draw cards on curve because almost our entire deck costs three plus, uh, with the exception of the armor and our fixers, everything costs three or more. Uh, for that reason, we're running Wave because it's always going to help us more than hurt us for the most part, um, unless we just happen to draw like our entire low end. Um, Hulkbuster is here as a uh, as a kind of synergy piece with Typhoid Mary as well as uh, as with uh, Arnim Zolo. But the idea is we can either win the game with some Arnim Zolo cheese or some Jubilee cheese, sometimes a little bit of both. Um, Killmonger is here kind of just as an like anti-Nova uh, deck, not that um, it will prevent Nova from blowing up, but a lot of uh, the units that the deck plays are cheap units themselves, and so we can blow up kind of their entire field, um, especially if they're setting up Nova. Um, so it just kind of fit perfectly because it only hits one card in our entire deck. Uh, it's an, this is one of those decks that can be really volatile and hit really hard or not hit at all. I've been experimenting with different variations of it for a while. This is my first time experimenting with this specific variation. Um, I just played with a different variation and made a couple changes and then decided to go ahead and start filming. Uh, we'll probably just use that as our Jubilee space then. I don't think I actually want to play Quicksilver yet, because I'm almost definitely just going to play Killmonger anyway. <clears throat> we can save the Quicksilver as a, as a late gameplay instead. Or at least a later gameplay. I mean, sure. I guess I'll put a copy in my hand, right? Okay, so they're going to give themselves a million dinosaurs. Good to know. Uh, that was a horrible hit for them. Um, there's a good chance I just won the game now. Very unfortunate for them. I don't know why you would snap with an Agatha, with an Agatha but go for it. <laughs> um, let's just do that for now. Yeah, so we're going to turn off these, and then we'll Giganto next turn. Looks like is the plan. And if they throw a Dino over here, we still have an Enchantress instead. There is a world where we just do like wave and kill longer next turn too.
Yeah, that's fine. I drew a reveal before us, which means if I were to throw uh, an Odin down, I would actually be able to turn off whatever they just play, which is a good thing to keep in mind. They aren't going to necessarily play the smartest play, though, because of that Akatha. So that's something to keep in mind as well. We can give ourselves plus five here, plus four here. I don't think that's good enough. Thinking that no matter how you slice it, I actually lose that. I actually lost to an Agatha coming down. Yikes. For the record, Agatha plays your cards for you. She doesn't necessarily follow curves. She doesn't necessarily do the combos. The fact that she actually did a Nova combo for them was extremely lucky. Um, unless they've changed how she works since the last I checked. The last I checked, even if you um, don't have her in your starting deck, as soon as you control her, she takes control of the game. <laughs> Interesting. I obviously don't want to armor too soon, because they're clearly playing a deck that uses destroy. They did that really early. Huh. Interesting decision there. Okay, now's the time to play this, actually. So that I can set up a wave plus Giganto. Alternatively, I could go for the Odin Jubilee play. I don't think that's correct, though. They snapped. Let's take advantage of that snap. I don't think they, they can possibly expect a Giganto here. I'm so curious if this actually does anything with armor. I might throw, but I want to see if this will still make a double when you have an armor down. And I'm willing to lose a match for science. Because its wording is, destroy a random friendly card here, add copies of it to the other locations. So I don't know if it has to be destroyed to trigger its effect. It does not. That is so cool. Like, obviously, you're gambling with the armor at that point. But, uh, that was super cool. Also, even if I had hit the armor, I would have, um, won middle, so we're, <laughs> we ended up being okay. Very glad I did that for science. Oh, sorry. I'm leaning a little bit too far over where the light's gonna be annoying in the background, so for however long that was going on on my face cam, sorry about that. Totally lost track of how many of these we've played, so we'll finish this match and then we'll stop filming. So I think this is like the fifth game. Um, I mean, we don't have a Killmonger in hand. Let's just play on curve then.
We're going to do this now. For the record, for those of you who don't know, Danger Room, its interaction with Hulkbuster is actually pretty scary for using it because um, it will check to see if it randomly destroys and then the Hulkbuster Buster will merge. So if it destroys the Hulkbuster, that's it. The Hulkbuster has gone. <laughs> Um, I think I'm going to pass here and go for a really big, like, Hulkbuster Zola combo. Well, easier said than done. We can do it with a Killmonger, I guess. Huh. My best bet might actually just be the Jubilee here. Because I have an Odin or a Zola follow up. Um, I'm going to play it out and gamble on them either not playing into Danger Room or Danger Room dicking them again, because they're having really bad luck this game on Danger Room. They didn't play the Danger Room. I think we get there then, right? Woo! Falcon returns their one cost cards to their hand. All right. Yeah, and so that's the combo deck. There are some other things I'd love to add to it, just don't have them unlocked yet. Um, keep you in loop on that one, though, because it's a fun one, and I think it's an archetype to watch out for. I definitely think Jubilee decks are going to be top tier once someone breaks the formula. That's not necessarily the strongest formula. That's the formula I'm playing with right now.